visit my grandmother uh, that Sabbath. Uh, I invited him to go with me, but he had to preach, he said. He took the, I don't know, he said he had to, uh, to preach, and then he was going down to see his mom. And that he would be there, though, back by the time that I got there. And I stopped at Mom and Dad's on the way. Uh, because it had been a long trip. And while I was there, he brought all that stuff and left it there while I was there. And I got my stuff together and walked out paper, my newspaper, I got my newspaper together, I got the Washington Post, uh, which he hated, he said he hated that I read the newspaper, um, and he said that he didn't know what I would do with what I read, but um, I, I was reading the newspaper, and he brought all that stuff, and he left it, and when I got everything up together, my paper and my purse, and I went to go out, I saw this pile of stuff there on the carport, the driveway, and it just didn't register. I, uh, I looked at it, and I called him on the cell phone. I called him immediately, and I said, and he answered the phone, and he goes, uh, what? And I said, what is this? And, uh, he told me that he thought we weren't, I don't know, he was in denial about our marriage, and we were married. I said, well, did you bring our marriage certificate? two and there was silence and I went and I found it. He brought our marriage certificate that showed we were married despite what he said to the contrary. Uh, and uh, and I, he, he asked if I'd read the note and I said, what, what note? And I looked and there was something there with my name on it but it was not my husband's handwriting. And so I picked it up and I read it and it wasn't, I called him back and I said, this isn't signed. I said, this means nothing. This isn't signed. And, and in it was a check. And, uh, and a letter saying, well, that he was leaving, basically. And so I put all the stuff I could fit into my car, and I drove down to Rocky Mount. And, uh, I tried calling everybody. Julie, who was on her honeymoon, I'm so glad I didn't reach her. I tried calling my husband, and he wouldn't answer anymore. I tried calling, uh people that, that own the apartments, that, that own the apartments and uh, ran the apartments until they told me not to call anymore, that they knew that they'd been told what was going on and not to call anymore. And so I slept in my car that night in the driveway in the parking lot actually of the apartments where we lived and cried, cried, cried. And the next morning I got up and I went to the uh, gas station, the stop and shop where I'd uh, been the night before. Uh, they were very kind and let me use the phone for a short for uh, local calls. And the uh, the really nice girl there, she uh, told me I should call the police, but they would let me in. Now my experience with the police was that they won't even let you in your car anymore. Uh, and I said, no, they won't let me into the apartment. So I tried everything I could think of all day long to get into the apartment. And uh, and it didn't work, and finally I called the police, like she said, and they came. They were really nervous, and every time somebody walked up the steps, they were like, is that him? Is that him? And I'm like, no, and he's, you know, no, it's not him. And, excuse me, and they worked on that for I don't know how long, and they were about to give up, and I asked if we could pray. And they, uh, one of them said, well, he's Jewish, and the, the, the guy that was talking was a heathen. Uh, but they would pray with me, and they, they, they prayed, and within five minutes I was in my apartment. And uh, the uh, self-proclaimed heathen fell down on his knees and went, hallelujah, you know. And I was happy. I was happy. I, I ran down and got my stuff because they'd asked me. They were like, well, lady, what do you want in there? And I said, I want to live there. It's my home. I live there. And uh, they're like, okay. So they got me in. And uh, I ran down. I got all my stuff. And I ran inside. And... And I washed everything. I washed the floor. I washed all the dishes. The dishes in the cupboards I washed. I washed the towels. I washed all my clothes. I washed the sheets. I washed everything um, in the whole apartment that I could wash with water. And, uh, and then I drew myself a nice hot bath. I prayed, Lord, because I was nasty. After sleeping in my car and being in a hot, muggy day, when it rained, it was humid and it was hot. I was stuck in my car, sweating while it rained outside. I had to leave the windows up because it was raining hard. It kept coming in the car. And I, uh, 
I prayed, Lord, I would really love a hot bath tonight. I would really, a hot bath, I know it's hot outside, I want a hot bath, but I did. Because I have arthritis and I wanted a special bath that helps to ease the arthritis with Epsom salts and Epsom salts and, and everything. And sure enough, as the sun was setting, I was soaking in my nice hot Epsom salt bath with music playing on the sound system and candles burning on the toilet seat and <laughs> how romantic no but I was alone so uh, but I was you know I was relaxing and as I got out and the window was open and the soft summer breeze was coming in the window fireworks started going off and I was numb I was sad I was heavy inside when they say you're heavy with sadness there there was a kind of a heavy feeling not a sharp pain but a heavy feeling but I still felt clean and the breeze was delicious and I felt very relaxed, very calm from all the excitement of the day and I was like, thank you God, thank you that I'm clean and about to get into nice, crisp, sweet smelling sheets and go to bed after this ordeal. And uh, that was July 4th, 2005.